my name is Delio. And I am the mother of two wonderful, amazing, beautiful, you name it, autistic children. They are two boys and their names are Joseph and Paul. Joseph is 14 years and Paul is 12 years. I want to talk to you about my journey. My journey with autism, my journey to acceptance. And I want to let you know what it was like for me during these years, what it is like for me even now. And I always think of this quote by Mother Teresa when I talk about my journey. I know that God will not give me anything I can't handle. I just wish he did not trust me this much. You know when you have dreams for your children? I had dreams for my child. I had big dreams. You know, this child is going to be a doctor. This child is going to be a mathematician. This child is going to be a force to be reckoned with. When I learned my children had autism, it's as if I had broken dreams. My dreams were not going to be realized. What I did not realize at the time that I had to build new dreams. I felt that life had dealt me an unfair hand. But again, what I did not realize is that that hand could be a winning hand if only I played my cards right. So I want to let you know about my story, how I moved from denial to acceptance. And right now I would even say a rejoicing stage. It is a grief process. How I moved from brokenness to beauty. How I moved from I can't to I can. To from impossible to possible. How I moved from why me to why not me. This is my story. When Joseph was one and a half years old, I enrolled him in a daycare. Six months afterwards, the administrator called me in and told me something is wrong with my child, that he has autism. Now, I've never heard about autism before, so I went home and I researched it. And I learned it was a disability and I became angry. How dare them? My child? My child has autism? I will show them. Anyway, I had to withdraw my child and they told me that he needs special education. But I was determined to show them that they were wrong. And I kept my child back from getting what he needed. I enrolled him in a Montessori school. Within two weeks, I had to remove him again. And then he went to special ed. I was in denial. I couldn't believe that my child had autism. Then I became confused. Hmm. Where did this come from? I called my mom and I asked, Mom, have you ever heard about autism? Is there autism in the family? She had no idea what I was talking about. And then I became pregnant again, this time with Paul. And during the pregnancy, I had positive thoughts. I used to lay my hand on my tummy and speak positively words of love to this child. And I said, you're not going to have autism. No disability. You're going to be a force to be reckoned with again. Paul was born with even more disabilities than Joseph. Then I began to feel guilty. Did I do something wrong? 
darkness made me feel that something was wrong with me. They blamed me for my children's disability. They told me it was in my genes. They told me it was because of my age. They made me feel that I had done something wrong in my pregnancy. And I searched. I looked throughout my pregnancy, throughout that period. And I questioned myself. I felt it was a curse. I felt that God was punishing me for something that I had done in my life. But he was also punishing my children. Not only me. My children were suffering and he was punishing my children. And I became angry. Why me? Why me? And why two autistic children? If life wanted to teach me a lesson, I felt at that time that I could have learned that lesson from one autistic child and one neurotypical child. I felt life was not being unfair to me and I was tired. I was a sleep deprived mom. At that time I was studying, I was doing a PhD in mathematics and both boys had sleeping disorders. Sometimes I would get one hour sleep a night. I was exhausted and I was broke. If you don't know this, it is expensive to care for children with autism. At that time, both children were having therapies and I would get bills for $3,000 or $4,000 every month. I was broke and I was angry. I would plead with God and barking with God, please heal my children, remove that autism from them. Did God hear my prayer? I'm sure he did, but my children are still autistic. I went to a pastor and I would complain all the time. I was just so angry. I was angry with everybody around me. I was angry with life. I told that pastor how much I hated my life and I wish I did not have that life. And do you know what he said to me? Delia, exceptional people have to deal with exceptional problems. Well, I did not want to be exceptional. I wanted to be ordinary. I was angry, but I did not know at this time how my anger and my hurt was hurting them more than ever. My children blossomed only when I reached the acceptance stage. Anger lasted a long time. It was like a long, harsh, unending winter. And I will never forget the day when that changed, when I made a conscious change. And that was the beginning of acceptance. I remember that day, I was getting dressed in my room and I looked into the mirror and it as if I saw myself for the first time. I saw an old, tired, haggard, angry woman. And as I looked into my eyes, I could not believe that this was the person I had become. And as I saw myself, all I could think was that my children could see that too. And I wept. I fell to the floor and I wept. I wept for all the years of my life that I had wasted away in anger, in guilt, in shame. I wept for the hurt 
that I had caused my children, I wept. And there on the floor, I made the conscious decision to accept my life. And I saw my life as a blessing, a blessing. At that time, I made a conscious decision to know that God had blessed me with these two children because he saw that I was capable, because he saw that I had the amazing strength to do so, because I had the necessary gifts to nurture these children and bring them up to be the best that they can be. And I made that decision to love them unconditionally and to give them my all. I made that decision to smile and laugh again and to love my life. Now, it wasn't easy at the beginning. I had to take one day at a time, sometimes one minute, one hour at a time, but I did it. Why not me? I moved from why me to why not me? Why not? Why couldn't I care for these beautiful children? I had to embrace them. I had to embrace the life. I had to celebrate them. I focused on what they can do, no longer on their disabilities and what they could not do. I saw life now as possible instead of impossible. I learned to be grateful for my life and to be grateful for my boys. And it could be the simplest thing, the smallest thing. Thank you. My, my son, Paul, had a feeding disorder and it was hard to feed him. And if one day he took a spoon and he put one spoon of food in his mouth, thank you. If one day I was able to sleep for three hours instead of one hour night, thank you, thank you, thank you. And my life changed. And as I learned to focus on the beauty in my children and not necessarily on the disability, my children blossomed. And they grew. Why? Because they saw a mommy who accepted them for who they are. A mommy who just saw the best in them. A mommy who loved them unconditionally. And that was when I learned to accept my children, to accept my life, to accept autism. And I moved to the rejoicing stage. My morning was turned into dancing. I rejoiced in my children. I rejoiced in the beauty in them. My children became my teachers and I rejoiced in that. They taught me to love. They taught me to love life, to love unconditionally. They taught me to play, how to become a child. I learned so much from my children. I have been learning and I still continue to learn so much from this journey. I am so glad that I was chosen to be their mom and I would choose them. I would choose my autistic, beautiful boys again and again <laughs> and again.